Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of valuing Reddit stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 9.5 billion market cap. They're trading at $65 a share, and they have 146 million shares outstanding. Reddit is a website where members submit content such as links, texts, images, and videos. Then that content is voted up or down by other members. The more upvotes, the better because it'll get higher and higher on the search. It is the 18th most visited website in the world. Half the website traffic comes from the US and that's followed by the UK and Canada, each 7%. The company started trading publicly on March 21st. Let's take a look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They do have negative free cash flow each year. They're still growing their revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. In order to judge their growth, we have to look at revenue and that looks really good. It grows each year from 229 million to over 800 million. It grew over 100% from 2020 to 2021, but the growth has dropped. 37% growth in 2022, 21% in 2023. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 18 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $15 billion. We divide that by 146 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $100. They're trading at 65, so they're trading at a 35% discount. You heard it here, it is a buy according to the model. I was a little surprised. I thought it would be overvalued, but it's undervalued. It makes me think back in 2012 when I bought Facebook and people were telling me I'm stupid, it's overvalued. And now I own $300,000 worth of Facebook. But I know Reddit is not Facebook. But I wouldn't be shocked if this stock doubled over the next year or two. There are 60 companies in the same industry as Reddit, and if they have a number in red, they are worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They don't really spend much in CapEx. Google and Meta spend a ton in CapEx. Google, 32 billion. Meta, 27 billion. Reddit is debt free, so they have a zero debt to equity ratio. Of course, they don't pay a dividend. They generate negative free cash flow but the forecast is for it to be positive this year in 2024. They rank 11th in market cap. When Facebook went public, their market cap was like 100 billion. 10 billion is peanuts. And we can't look at their price to book, they have negative equity. We can't look at their PE, they have negative earnings. And we can't look at their price to free cash flow, they have negative free cash flow. But we could look at their price to sales, which looks a bit rich at 11.8. That means they're trading at 12 times revenue. They really need to pump up their revenue in order to justify this high valuation. Let's go through their financials. We'll start off with their income statement. This is 2022 and 2023. Revenue grew from 667 million to 800 million. Like Meta and Google, almost all their revenue is advertising revenue. Of the 800 million, 789 million is advertising revenue, 15 million is other revenue. Of the 800 million of revenue, 650 million is in the US, 150 million outside the US. If you're curious what other revenue is, it consists of data licensing, Reddit premium subscriptions, and other products they sell. Let's go back to the income statement. Below revenue is cost of revenue, that's 111 million. Cost of revenue is payments to third parties for the cost of hosting and supporting their mobile application website. Also cost of revenue, all the expenses tied to their advertising. A lot of that is payroll for their employees. It's mentioned right here. Cost of revenue consists of personnel costs, including salaries, benefits, and stock-based compensation. Their biggest expense is R&D, $438 million. R&D is mainly personnel costs. That's salary, benefits, and stock-based compensation. And those employees are engineers, also, other employees engage in the research, design, and development of new and existing products. R&D also includes consulting services and hosting costs 
associated with internal research and development activities. Below R&D is marketing, 230 million of marketing. Below that is GNA, 160 million. So their total expenses are higher than their revenue. So they have negative operating income, negative 140 million. Last year, negative 170 million. They have a net loss of 91 million, better than last year, a net loss of 159 million. They are increasing their shares outstanding. Last year it was 57 million, this year it's 59 million. Let's look at their balance sheet. Current assets, 1.5 billion. Current liabilities, 130 million. So their current ratio is really high. They have 1.2 billion of cash and marketable securities. Accounts receivables, how much money others owe them, 245 million. Total assets, 1.6 billion, same as last year. Total liabilities, 156 million. Last year, 125 million. Their biggest liability is accrued expenses, 83 million. An accrued expense is when a business incurs an expense but hasn't paid it yet. Assets minus liabilities equals equity. They have negative equity, negative 400 million. They raised 2.1 billion from selling their business. They raised 1.85 billion from selling convertible preferred stock. They raised 300 million from selling regular equity. And they lost 700 million from running their business. Let's take a look at the statement of cash flows. The first section is operating cash flow. They had a loss of 75 million, a little better than last year of a loss of 94 million. In their investing section, they invested 9.7 million of PP&E. These big numbers are the purchase and sale of marketable securities and not much going on in their financing section. Cash at the beginning of the accounting period, the beginning of the year, 435 million. At the end of the year, 401 million. And you see this number, 401,176. If we go back to the balance sheet, you'll see the cash on that balance sheet is 401,176. Let's take a look at the company on Simply Wall Street. It's last price 58, 9.4 billion market cap. Let's see what they say about the company. Reddit operates a website that organizes digital communities. It organizes communities based on specific interests that enable users to engage in conversations by sharing experiences, submitting links, uploading images and videos, and replying to one another. They were founded in 2005, 19 years ago, headquartered in San Francisco, California. They've only been trading a few days. Their lowest stock price was March 22nd at 46. The highest was $65 on March 26th. Simply Wall Street values the company at 123. They say it's 53% undervalued. Their revenue projection for 2024 is 1 billion, 2025, 1.3 billion, 2026, 1.6 billion. And their free cash flow projection for 2024 is 128 million, 2025, 261 million, 2026, 481 million. This red line is their debt, and they have no debt. And the green line and blue line are their cash and equity, which are almost identical. Their current equity is 1.4 billion. Their cash is 1.2 billion, which doesn't really make sense because we just looked at their balance sheet and they have negative equity. The CEO's salary in 2022 was 200,000, 2023, 340,000. And Steve Huffman has been CEO since the beginning over 19 years. Total compensation, a cool 193 million. In the past year, there's been a bunch of insider sales, one small buy. 47% of the companies held by the general public, 22% by private companies, 13% by institutions, 12% by venture capital and private equity firms, and 7% by insiders. Their biggest shareholder is Advanced Publications. That's their parent. They own 21.5% of the company. Advanced Publications is a privately held media company. They have significant stakes in Con Nast, Charter Communications, this company, of course, and Warner Brothers Discovery. Then Fidelity owns 7% of this company. Hydrazine Capital, 6.2%. That's a VC firm. Quiet Capital, 6%. I think that's a hedge fund in San Francisco. Tencent owns 0.3% of the company. That's the massive Chinese game company. Lots of individuals I've never heard of. Benjamin Lee, Porter Gale, Michelle Reynolds. Their employee count has gone up quite a bit from 791 to 2000 and the ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.